Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and you know I love my game development tools, and we have another one today. It is called Material Maker. Now before we get too far into this, apologize if I sound weird, still fighting with a cold, hopefully it will be done soonish. Uh, anyways, what we're looking at today is Material Maker. It is a procedural texture generation tool that is actually built using the Godot game engine, and it's actually available as an add-in for Godot, but we're going to be looking at the standalone version today. It is completely free, although donation-based if you want to support the author. It hosts it up on itch.io. Also, the source code is available on GitHub under the MIT code license. As I always do, I will link all of those links in the linked article down below, so you do not need to pay too much attention to where these things are. If you want to grab it, head on over to the itch.io link. You can grab it via uh, the download. Just go ahead, click download now. Uh, you can pick however much money you want to pay or nothing at all. And then what we are going to be looking at today is Material Maker uh, 0 0.6, which was just released. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of what is new new in that release. Instead, what we're going to do is jump right in and take a look at Material Maker itself. Now, the entire idea behind Material Maker is you kind of use a network of nodes to create a material that you then export out and you can use in your game. So it's kind of using a procedural material generation approach. There's been a couple of these tools I've featured on this channel, but hey, what's one more? Now I'm going to show you a really ugly version and then I'm going to jump in and show you some of their more complex examples. So what you do is just basically come in and you can create uh, base shapes and forms. So for example, we've got tiles and weaves and herring bones and so on. Let's bring in a herring bone pattern. And we can do it really simple. We can just basically connect that straight up to the Albedo channel and there is our final result. Now you'll notice this also has a um, environment map in the background. You can switch between the various different options. So we have a lobby, different lighting models that can show up on our surface. We can also click this little guy right here and have it show up in the background of our surface so we can see an even more detailed version of it. We can also switch between a cube and various different other shapes such as a cylinder or a sphere like so. All right, so now that we've got it, uh, we've got this very simple combination. You'll see here our inputs and outputs. If you've used any kind of visual graphic system, this should be uh, understandable to you. We can set up some simple parameters like the number of repetitions, the number of rows, the number of columns. We can offset. We can have our, our mortar size. We can change it, the size of it up and down accordingly. Um, and then what we can do is to start building more complex patterns. You see this little eyeball here? We can actually click that and get a preview of what we are generating here. So now we've got this herringbone here. Uh, let's go ahead and add in a Perlin uh, noise function. So you can see here the end result of the noise generation. And we could just kind of drag these two in together. So let's do a blend in here now. So let's find blend. Blend is right here. It's like so. We'll drop in number one and our Perlin noise number two. And then we can change the blend type. So let's do a screen blend. And we see the preview of what we're working on right here as we work with it. So we can change the opacity, the effect of... So basically you're switching between uh, the, which one you're going to blend or the blend amount. So we're going to put a little bit of noise over top like so. All right, that's looking pretty sweet. Now, obviously we haven't connected it out yet. Um, and we can also connect to various different other channels. So if I wanted to, I could take this, this new version and I could apply it to the roughness map and you'll see the effect there. Or say we wanted to actually reverse that, uh, we can do that as well. So let's do, um, let's see, how is that done? That is done through colorized invert. So we'll do a drop and invert in. We'll drop that channel in there. So you'll see the results of the inversion. Now we've got the black version of it as opposed to the white version. And we'll drop that in on our roughness map. And there you see the immediate results of doing so. Um, now what we could also do is we want to say some color in here. So let's, let's, uh, let's also drop this in. No, no, we'll stick with this guy. So right here we've got our bricks. They don't look uh, that interesting yet because there's no color there. We're going to go back to this colorize. We'll drop one of those into the channel. We'll drop our pin into the colorize channel. And then we'll go out to the albedo channel here. So now we're going to be dropping in color. So we can do our primary color like so. So you see we just made our grout lines red. Uh, actually, let's do them kind of a gray white. And then we'll make our bricks kind of a burgundy-ish red like so. So there you go. There is how you can go ahead and create uh, these shader graphs that in turn go ahead and you can export out the texture details. We'll show that in a second. But instead what I'm going to do is load up one of their materials. So if you come here, load materials, you'll find an example. There are a ton of different examples here. So for example, paper, rocks, so on. Let's, let's load up that rock, see what it does. So here you can see the result of it. There's the end result. It's using a bunch of basically noises mixed together, warped, colorized, and out you get. Let's go ahead and show one of the other ones. So load material, there's actually a, kind of an interesting one that creates biohazard logos. So that one's called biohazard, like so. And you'll see this is actually using a combination of patterns and circles 
to make this biohazard shape. It shows better on a cube. It's like so. And so you see the entire process, basically, they're doing transformations and, and creations of a circle. So you can kind of see the work as it's going through the process. So we create these two circles. We transform one into the other and then blend the results. So then you get the crescent shape. So really, you're just taking that white circle and that white circle, and you're doing a difference blend. So kind of like a Boolean subtract. And then you've made the one. And you kind of create a bunch of them, apply some color to it. So we got a colorize right here. So you see, we've got white comes out, then another colorize here, turns it to black. And then we take the white channel, and we add just the red channel of it using the combine, and then boom, there is our end result texture. So you can see you get some pretty uh, advanced graphs going on. Let's just do one more example. So let's load in materials, so examples, and let's just go with, um, I don't know, bricks, we already kind of saw a brick. So let's do uh, metal. Here's see an example metal with some rust applied to it and how you can go about generating. Now, one of the things you've noticed is all the way through, we've got these various different um, functions. For example, here's this per Perlin uh, noise generator. And using Perlin noise to create things is very, very common. But what we can actually do here is you can just come up to tools and select make selected notes editable, or we can just select it and then hit control F. And you know, you need to, we got these options down here and we can edit, we can create a new one, or we can save it. I'm gonna click edit and it brings up this really cool tool. You'll know, notice right here, right off the hop, we have our parameters or our inputs. We can add, go ahead and add more inputs if we wish. And you see, this is how you configure them. So we got four floats as our input and the, the range uh, that is defined for them. And then we have spin box controls or not. And then the rest of this is going to be, here is your output. It's a grayscale, so you can have it be color, RGB, or grayscale. And then the results of what is sent out. But what you're going to probably find most interesting is you come over here to global functions. And you're going to see this is actually the shader code that is running that node. So if you want to create your own shader nodes in this graph, uh, you can do it basically this simple. You can actually create a new one this way and save it out. And if you go and look at the um, install directory, from so over here, you'll notice that we've got a number of generators and generators correspond to the majority of the things we're dealing with. So here we've got a noise generator, for example, Perlin noise and so on. Well, if you pick and open up any one of these, you're gonna find they're basically just shaders. Um, I'm not gonna bother doing so because it looks kind of garbled. Uh, but at the end result, this code is ultimately saved in those generators. So you can create your own uh, generators in the graph. Just go to like um, shader toy or some other shader source, grab it there, uh, you've got Again, control over the, the inputs. You can create outputs from it. These do nothing for some reason ever, uh, but then you can just basically come in here and paste in your code that is controlling it, and your end result is um, a node that you can use in this graph, and you can basically start creating these um, textures almost immediately. So you'll notice in this particular case, we've got an albedo, a metallic, a roughness, and a normal map. So we could have also done ambient occlusion and uh, depth map here. But what we can do is come here and go file, and you do export material like this, and it is saved. Okay, so it saves in the same folder that you were working with, I believe. So we come back here, and we'll go into our examples directory, and you'll see it just created those textures for us. So this is kind of your end game of working with this tool. Here is your albedo texture in PNG. Here is your uh, normal or the metal normal map on it, and then here is your um, Actually, what is this one? Orm, uh, be metallic map. Sorry, and then finally we should have one more map in here somewhere. Uh, I don't know how to get to so metal. Nor no, I guess we just got the three saved. So, anyways, that is your end result. So now what you can do is you can take these textures and apply it to uh, your three D content creation system, such as you know Blender or Max or Maya or wherever you are working in, or you can go ahead and import these textures into a game, such as um, you know game engine, such as the Godot engine, obviously is a good fit. Another thing to keep in mind is this actual entire process, this thing, is still available as a plugin directly inside of the um, Godot game engine. Uh, and you can then um, save these things. If you go over here to file, you'll see you've got the option of saving the materials as well. So you can save the materials as a procedural texture file. And those can be used directly in the Godot game engine. So uh, it's kind of a really neat tool. It's, it's useful on the one level if you're just trying to create some interesting textures. Uh, you can just bring stuff in here and start playing around. You've got a pretty good selection of um, a node to work with and then of course you can come in here and start creating your nodes. So once again, just grab the node that you're interested in, for example, this colorized node, hit control and F and then hit the edit 
And there you see you got full control over what comes in, what comes out, and then the code to control it. In this case, there is none because the output is quite literally just calling the gradient function. <laughs> so that was a little too straightforward, but uh, yeah, that is kind of the, the gist of what this program is all about. Now, once again, it is available on itch.io. It's called Material Maker 0.6. Now, one of the things I found kind of interesting with this particular release is if you head on over to the Godot page for it, so Godot Procedural Textures, um, you will find that it is um, the current releases doesn't show the 0 0.6 release. So, and so the last one you're gonna get is from quite some time ago. I think the 0 0.6 release is in this branch, this export plugin branch. Uh, as you can see, it is some 52 commits ahead of master, but I am not 100% certain um, where this is available from. But again, it, it's also uh, in binary form. So if you're not gonna build it yourself and you don't care, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, you can just grab it from itch.io. But if you wanna build it yourself, I think the version for 0 0.6 until they do a formal release is this branch. But again, please don't quote me on that. And you'll notice if you come in here and take a look at the code, um, it's mostly GD script. Um, so this is actually a Godot project that you could probably open up directly in Godot and start editing. Uh, so it, it's a very cool project, especially if you already are working with the Godot engine. All right, so that is it. That is Material Maker 0.6, a very cool tool uh, for creating your own procedural textures, if that's your thing, and a uh, an add-on available from the add-on library for the Godot engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.